All right, viewers, it's still CS Academy once again. We're back to continue with the calculation and diagrams in economics. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, viewers, this question is a question from the theory of supply. And you know when it has to do with demand and supply, I'm always in love with the question. So let's, let's, um, let's kill it. For a supply curve, an increase in the price of a commodity will result in what? Let's add a question mark. Now, don't forget, I've told you guys, if you've not watched a video on YouTube for effect of changes in price, um, demand and supply on equilibrium price and quantity, you need to go and watch those videos. If you have not seen a video on factors affecting demand, you need to also go and see that video, more importantly because of this question. Now, in that video, we're able to explain the difference between change in demand and change in quantity demanded. And I remember in that video, we also said change in demand is determined by other factors affecting demand. It means that the price of the commodity is not responsible. Now, if the price is responsible, we're talking about change in quantity demanded. Let's have a switch. The same thing is applicable if we're using the factors affecting supply. We'll give you two classification. Let's have a case where the factors affecting supply. Now, I don't want us to just go straight to these options. I want you guys to have a good knowledge of why the answers, you know, um, they're not correct, are not correct, and why the ones that we pick as a final answer is correct. So factors, factors of supply, let me just put it that way. Determinants of supply, whichever way you want to have it there. And the first one that you will notice is price of the commodity. Now, price of the commodity, we're going to have cost of inputs. Then we have level of technology. For example, level of technology. Now, I really want us to stop here. There'll be other ones, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to, you know, go waste a lot of time. Let's consider these two class. Everything from cost of inputs below, they happen to be in one category. Why the price of the commodity maintain a particular category. The category of the price of the commodity is the price factor. The price factor is responsible for something. Price factor of supply. Why this one has to do with non-price factor? Take note. Non-price factor of Supply everything down. We're saying price factor of supply. The price factor of supply is also responsible or the only factor responsible for change in quantity demanded. Let's bring it down for clarity. Change in quantity supplied, sorry. And then for these non-price factors, they are responsible for change in the in supply, rather. Now, having this knowledge, all we need to do is bring it back into this question. What is the examiner talking about here? An increase in the price of a commodity. Take note, once price is involved, what we're dealing with is change in quantity supplied. You don't need to stress yourself. Option A says a decrease in supply. No. A decrease in supply cannot be your answer because that's a part of change in supply. Now, decrease in supply, we can consider two diagrams. 
one representing change in supply, another representing change in quantity supplied. Let's take the slope. For a supply nature, we can have it this way. Let's take this. Price changes before supply will change. Movement along the supply curve, ABC, means that price will have to change from 1 to P2 to P3 for quantity supply to change. But in this case, we have two different diagrams. And these two different diagrams for clarity, I think I need to space them so that the viewers can have a good knowledge. Let's have it this way. The first one representing change in quantity supplied. For change in quantity supplied, the price must move for you to have quantity supplied move. But for change in supply, all we need to do is have a shift S2 S3 so it's either we have leftward shift or rightward shift this shows increase this shows decrease but in this case the price of the commodity is not moving we have price one and then quantity can change three times without price moving. Take notes. So price is not responsible for these changes. Let's have this is Q1, Q2, Q3. But this one, at price one, Q1, at price two, Q2, at price three, Q3. You can see that price will have to change for this to change. But this price didn't change, but we still have changes. So what's responsible? Other factors responsible here. Take notes. Other factors for this. Change in supply, which is this diagram. Change in quantity supplied is for this. Another name for change in quantity supplied is movement along the supply curve. Take notes. And once you understand that this is this, then the factor here has to be price. That's what the examiner is expressing. Price, A cannot be our answer because A is not determined by price, but by what? Other factors affecting supply. B, a decrease in the quantity supplied. Okay, this can be our answer. But the question is, what's the law of supply following this instruction? If we have an increase in the price, when price increases, do suppliers take more commodities to the market or not? Yes, they do. They want to sell at a higher price, all things being equal. That means when price is high, they do not get discouraged. So you can have a decrease in the quantity supplied when price is increased. That makes option B wrong. Option C, an increase in supply, no, because it is the opposite of this. And these two still lie under this diagram. And this is what we're talking about. D is your answer because it's the positive response of quantity supplied to the increase in price. So anytime, any day, you have this good knowledge after watching you know, our video, you can apply it to any question that has to do with change in supply or change in quantity supplied. And makes option D our best answer. That settles it. Now, this question is another interesting question from the same theory of supply. And now we're talking about the elasticity aspect of it. And the examiner says, if a firm is faced with an elastic supply curve, its revenue will do what? Okay, before we get into the options, I still want to say again, if you have not watched our videos on elasticity, you need to go and find it. Because this whole theory of demand and supply, I've said, is the main hub. And we're trying to always take time to explain the questions from that angle. We, we, we just want students to even um, get better knowledge. 
and have it from different angles in case the examiner tries to you know change one or two things you still have the background knowledge and then you can pick your answers without stressing yourself this question can only be analyzed perfectly with the use of a diagram now i have brought in calculations if we have enough time but then let me use diagram to kill it if you remember elastic supply when supply is elastic it also means relatively elastic or fairly elastic they share the same diagram and this is what the diagram for elastic looks like the diagram for elastic is this way don't forget supply normally this is what unitary supply is but when supply becomes elastic it goes this way as if it has a resemblance with perfectly elastic now let's go i have my price and then I have my quantity in this aspect in units. If there is price one, first price, for example, let's assume this price is 20 Naira. The examiner, the producer gets this first quantity into the market. Let's assume that's 200 units. And then the price goes up to maybe 30 naira that's price two let's check the response of the producer the producer is going to run to the market with a higher unit of commodity just for this small change in price 20 30 10 error difference look at the gap the reaction here is more than the action of price because the two of them have to play hand in hand price acts quantity reacts it is not the degree of responsiveness or what the rate at which quantity supplied reacts that determines what our answer is going to be here now quantity reaction is higher than price action what do we have let's call this 1000 units and then you go back to the option and ask yourself which option actually explains what a diagram has option a they said its revenue will be supplied at a higher price doesn't make sense its revenue will be supplied at a higher price it doesn't make sense they said its revenue will double at a higher price well we can't really trust it being double because this we can't guarantee that it's double of it but one thing is sure it's higher than it c says its revenue will do what increase by more than the percentage increase in price that's really confirmed whether it is double or not we can't be too sure but we are sure that it has increased it's more than this option d revenue will equal percentage change in price no this is wrong once we have been able to confirm that three options are wrong we don't need to stress ourselves we know this is our correct answer because he explains what happens between the difference in that reaction the gap here is more than the gap here and that makes option c our best answer that ends it now this question is also a very good question needs students with good analysis in a um, theory of demand and supply to also be able to get correct answer in this one the examiner says for an inferior good a decrease in real income will lead to now take note of this real income the confusion is actually on the fact that the examiner mentioned inferior goods inferior goods are goods whose demand will reduce as the 
um, income of the consumer increases. So when the consumer starts earning new, um, a higher amount, a salary, the consumer might feel that, okay, this commodity is not something that, you know, I need to consume. Check, take for instance somebody who used to buy um, roasted plantain from the roadside woman, and then he used to be a roadside mechanic also, and now gets a job as um, maybe one of the MDs in one automobile company, and then he still has to drive down to that woman to buy. No, 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 no. It's an inferior good to him. He's earning fat salary now. He needs to go look for probably plantain chips or something else to substitute. That's an inferior commodity. But that's the confusion the examiner is putting up for students. This comma, in English language, you call it parenthesis. This can be ignored. A decrease in real income. Now, this is the factor. This is the player here. Remember, we have three types of elasticity of demand. And in our last uh, video, I told um, our viewers, try to check out our videos on elasticity of demand. Now, in this case, the examiner is talking about income elasticity of demand. Oh, fine. Real income means it is quantity demanded with respect to income, not price and income, not price of one commodity against another commodity. It's now income against quantity demanded. And income, in this case, is a player. It becomes the main determinant. Now, income is not the price of the commodity, but have been used to replace the price of the commodity. That means that the main determinant here is the real income. Now, if we have option A, option A will give you a lower equilibrium price. We're not dealing with equilibrium price here, so it has no place. Option A is totally out of it. There are two things the examiner wants you to be wise about. The examiner wants to know if you're smart enough to realize that quantity and income. We used to have quantity and price. So the position of price have been replaced with income. It means that it is quantity demanded that is reacting. Income, action, quantity demanded reaction. Let's not stress ourselves. Don't forget that income elasticity of demand is calculated with the formula percentage change in quantity demanded as against percentage change in no more price now but income. So once you pick your idea from here, you know that quantity demanded is playing with what? Income. That's the real income you have here. And quantity demanded only exists here. This is a correct answer. A change in quantity demanded. This cannot be correct because this is talking about shifts. And shifts is an example of what we call change in demand, not change in quantity demanded. This is not applicable. Quantity demanded has no business to do with shift. Same thing here. Quantity demanded only has business to do with this. Change in quantity demanded. And that's what will happen when income. Now, the examiner is not specific. A decrease in real income is not coming up to give us an option that is directional. Whether it is the change of increase or change of decrease. But we are not interested in the direction. Everything we need for this answer is inside option B. If I consider a diagram for option C and D, we'll probably realize that we do not have anything to do with quantity demanded there because what you have for the shift inward of demand is something of this nature. Outward, inward. 
d1 d2 d3 so this is increases decrease but quantity changes even without the change in income yes for example but for this income will have to change for quantity demanded to change and that's a question coming from this aspect so please looking at this formula this is our best answer b is our best answer this will not fall in because quantity doesn't have business to do with these two simple and short the next question we were having on the board is a very simple question for those who are conversant with mathematics you know topics like change of subject of formula once you're grounded in it this is going to you know be very easy let's just go with substitute values and then make qs the subject of formula the examiner have actually given us 9 to the p now let's go with the question if price which is p is equal to 1 over 2 into bracket qs which is quantity supplied plus 15 what is the quantity supplied at 9 error solution we recall first that what p is equal to 9 naira then we can say 9 naira is equal to 1 over 2 qs plus 15 make let's make qs the subject of formula so making qs the subject of formula you have to rescue qs qs is in a trap quantity supplies is a trap so this will have to go first multiply so we have nine times two is equal to qs plus 15. once we take this out we can open the bracket the one in front of it doesn't really make any difference this one just a coefficient now so we can open the bracket and have 20 supplied plus 15. 9 2 gives us what 18 and that's quantity supplied plus 15. if i have to continue we have 18 minus 15 when i collect like terms this will come this way 18 minus 15 is equal to quantity supplied what do we have let me share it on this other side i have 3 is equal to quantity supplied please so we can have our option b to be our answer it's a question that can take 10 seconds just 10 seconds and you'll be done That's just okay it. viewers with that we have come to the end of today's session of calculation and diagrams in economics don't forget to run through a trend of videos with respect to that turn on your notification make sure you like subscribe and also leave a comment it's still cs academy thank you very much